First, we're going to go around with the panel and, and introduce ourselves one by one. And then after that, we're going to turn it over to Yannick. So we'll start with you, Simon. Uh, my name is Simon Downs. I'm a, a developmental psychologist. I've been living in Japan for the past 23 years. Um, in addition to being a medical student here, I'm also in charge of EMC testing and uh, FDA registration for a new bone conducted hearing aid. Okay, welcome, Simon. Sean? Nice to see you guys. Um, my name is Sean Orr. I'm a neurologist, neurointensivist, stroke doctor, endovascular therapist. I'm also the uh, vice president and U.S. medical director for a medical device company called Orneen. Uh, we manufacture and distribute a uh, non-invasive continuous cerebral blood flow monitor. I'm in private practice uh, in Florida and uh, very excited to be working with John on this uh, uh, concept of medical TV. Okay, welcome, John. Thanks. Julio? Hi, how are you? My name is Julio Pereira. I'm from Brazil, Sao Paulo, and I'm from Neurosurgery Blog. <coughs> Welcome, Julio. John? Yeah, hi. I'm a medical writer. I have a background in neuroscience, and I do a lot of these hangouts with John just to ask some questions and see what's happening in the field. Okay. Welcome, John. Peter. Hello, Peter. You got to mute. Unmute yourself. Unmute. Unmute. Uh, hello, hello. I'm uh, Peter Galkin. I'm a doctor neurosurgeon from Moscow. I'm, my specialization is uh, neurovascular surgery. Uh, it's a pathology of brain and uh, also neck vessels. Yeah, and Peter gave a great talk last week. And Dan from South Africa, special guest. Hi, John. Hi, Bernie. Hello, I'm Bernardo de Andrada from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. I'm a neurosurgeon. And I work at Getulio Vargas Hospital. It's a public hospital, and I'm very glad to be here with you, great professionals. Okay, uh, I'm sorry, folks. Uh, we'll get better at the tech, at the tech of this. But uh, anyways, the, the main thing is we got Yannick here to come to tell us about his fantastic uh, platform. So welcome, Yannick. It's all yours. Thank you. Um, so um, I hope I'm not on mute here. No, okay, everybody hears me. That's good. So uh, thanks, John, for the invitation. Uh, it's great to be here. Uh, I'm uh, going to give you what I was aiming to do is maybe give you a little bit of background and then run uh, through a PowerPoint to show you visual stuff because uh, the platform is about uh, video collaboration with a lot of uh, innovative features. So I think it's important that you see um, a lot of that. Uh, and uh, so as a background, uh, as John was saying, I'm a critical care physician and cardiologist. I do now about 90% uh, of my practice in the ICU. Uh, I work in Montreal. Uh, we have a multidisciplinary uh, ICU. We're 13 intensivists, and we run all the units. So one week it could be the trauma ICU, the other week the neuro ICU, medical ICU. So uh, it's great because we, we get to see a, a lot of different cases. Um, and uh, over the years, uh, I've been doing a lot of teaching in bedside ultrasound education to teach uh, ICU, emergency physicians, anesthesiologists, so the non-radiologists and non-cardiologists. I've been uh, doing this for the last 10 years or so, and I've traveled a lot. Um, so um, in the uh, beginning of 2012, um, I uh, kind of uh, decided that would, it would be time to, uh, to pass to the next level in terms of education, and I started to... Uh, look around me and, and uh, try all the different uh, platforms that exist going from Skype to uh, WebEx to GoToMeeting or all these kinds of platforms, trying to see how these, these could be used for remote education, teaching, assessment. And um, I didn't find what I was looking for in terms of the degree of interaction and trying to go to the next level, doing more, uh, but in a simple way. Uh, and uh, the most important thing would be to have a secure platform as we're all working in hospitals, uh, medical clinics, uh, uh, ORs. So um, we both have to uh, uh, interact with each other, with professionals, but also often with patients. So the idea was to find a way to get a platform going that would be secure enough for healthcare, for the healthcare environment, but also uh, to be able to go from a healthcare secure environment to a the, the home of a patient, for example, for follow-up. So this is what triggers, uh, I would say, the uh, research and development around REACTS, uh, which started uh, two and a half years ago. 
and uh, gradually uh, I, I worked with the team that I've, I had been working for for 10 years for multimedia uh, education, all kinds of curriculum, 3D models. So we uh, got the team together and we started working on Reacts and uh, we officially launched it uh, three weeks ago. Um, so in fact if I put the, uh, the PowerPoint on and um, uh, hopefully you'll see You'll see it. Start screen share. So, John, you let me know if you see yes, it. I'll yes. put it up uh, in a second. Yes, yes. React. It's up so there. you see that? Okay. Yes. yes. So, uh, React and Facts uh, is an acronym for Remote Education, Augmented Communication, Training, and Supervision. So, the idea was really to uh, not just bring simple video conference. Uh, you know, telemedicine has been around for 30 years, and there are a lot of modalities out there to do fairly simple video communication. So the idea was not to just bring another player in that field. The idea was to bring something more. So um, uh, the, the, um, the idea was really to bring uh, uh, interactive, interaction, so a very interactive audio video communication platform. And it's all software and web-based. So there's no hardware component apart from, you know, for sure your computer, for example. But uh, you don't have to buy hardware to use the platform. So as I said, the idea was to have something simple, flexible, intuitive with advanced features that would optimize and maximize interactivity and in fact to bring virtual communication more real, even if it sounds weird to say virtual and real in the same sentence. So we kind of got a, a, a term together called hyper-presence, which for us, uh, for the team, uh, we really brought things uh, beyond and above telepresence. Uh, to, to try to bring something more global. So um, for sure, as I said, the, the primary thing was to make sure we had something designed uh, to have very high performance and security. Uh, so I'm not going to go through the technical details of that. Uh, you have that on the website, and I can send you more info if you need it. But that was one of the main uh, key points. Then uh, if I just put uh, a few of the uh, important points, um, the, the, the goal was to have in one platform multiple modali modalities. So that's why you see the little puzzle logo here, meaning trying to put pieces together. So uh, high quality video conferencing, tools for collaboration, tools to allow skill assessment. So we incorporated tools for checklists, reports, snapshots, uh, being able to do as we're doing now, simple application or screen sharing, being able to share live all kinds of different medias, performing live file transfers, and we were able to uh, integrate things like augmented reality and real-time image overlay, which I'm going to show you. So um, uh, the goal was to really be able to bring this in one platform so that you wouldn't have to go to five different platforms to, do, uh, inter to have interaction with colleagues. So um, again, software solution, and without getting into the details, uh, it's uh, a low cost, so uh, it's the equivalent of seven dollars per month per user, so eighty-four bucks for the year. Um, it's using the consumer's electronics, webcams, computers, and right now the full version is available for Windows platform. We have also the light version for Android, and uh, we're working on the iOS and macOS versions. The light versions, in fact, are for tablets or phones, which, uh, as you will understand have less capacity than a, than a computer. So they are, I would say, a, a, a version which has less features, uh, but that shares the same uh, security and architecture. So um, what I would like to do is just show you a couple of videos. Um, depending on your internet connection, some of what you're going to see may be a little bit uh, um, uh, not that smooth, but at least you'll see the, the, the frames, and, and it, I hope it will be able to give you a good uh, understanding of what it does. So first point, now it's black, it's normal because I didn't start it, is that in the platform you can have multi-feed streaming which means as I'm going to be showing here that you can connect multiple inputs. So um, you're going to be able to see um, okay there's audio here but I don't know if you can hear it, hopefully not. So you can see here that I have uh, two cameras connected, a patient monitor, so with little converters in which you can uh, connect uh, patient monitors or webcams. You can have all these streams at the same time. So you can show to one person at a distance multiple cameras. Here I have an Oxfam machine, a webcam, and this in fact was a communication with colleagues from France. Here I'm in the cardiac surgery wards, 
and I'm going to put this video again, but on its own. So um, the surgeon, the cardiac surgeon, has the front, you know, the the frontal camera, uh, which uh, is connected through an S video port uh, through a, a, a converter that you can buy, uh, you know, at any uh, electronic store that converts S video to uh, USB. You connect that in your computer; it's automatically detected by Reacts. And we've connected two webcams in the OR, and then we remotely stream this through Reacts. I'm going to show you here. So what you see here is the feed that I receive uh, in my office from the operating room. So I just drag and drop the feeds, which are on the top here. So I, I drag one webcam, the other webcam, the uh, um, uh, surgeon's camera. So at a distance, using simple internet, I can see exactly what's happening. I can play with the layout. Uh, and here I'm just showing you the multi-feed streaming characteristic, but very easy to do. And I have one more feed, which is mine at the bottom. You see my webcam here. Um, so you could have three, four, five feeds. And as long as you have uh, adequate, you know, regular bandwidth, you can feed all of this at a distance. So multi-feed streaming is one of the innovative features. Then we were able to uh, integrate a chroma key like you see at cinema using green screen so that, for example, the surgeon or the person doing uh, teaching or supervising an intervention can just, uh, you know, using um, a green background and focusing is the webcam over it. I'm just going to put it on pause here. There you go. So here I have a webcam that I'm attaching to a little uh, holder with a green screen uh, piece of, you know, a green uh, piece of paper. And you're focusing the camera right on that green screen. And then you tell the software, you know, to just get that uh, green out and then the, the background becomes transparent and you can superimpose your feed as shown here over anything that's playing. So here I even did, the, you can see me here over a cardiac ultrasound and a schematic view. So I just superimpose um, my feed over a green screen that was behind me and I can live um, uh, remotely uh, send that uh, very interactively to a remote user. So uh, <clears throat> you're going to see here uh, the, the somebody is just placing over a piece of, of pasta uh, that little face and with the hands at a distance guides the person to do the thing. Here uh, somebody uh, is uh, showing, uh, you can see here laparoscopic surgery, so the surgeon in his office can put his hands over the live feed. You can even change the opacity so that the hands become semi-opaque. And the people in the OR sees exactly that, they see the, the hand coming over the feet. So you can take the scalpel and say, cut there, do this, do that. And I'm going to show you here uh, something, uh, uh, a clip during a neurosurgical procedure. So a remote surgeon is in the OR with the microscope and the other surgeon is in his office and in fact uh, kind of used the green screen. Uh, it's just a big cloth on the table. We can see the laptop, we can see the camera aimed toward the green screen and his, his hands. And if you look on the laptop screen, when I turn it on, you can see on the screen that this is the microscope uh, feed from the other surgeon. And the, the surgeon in his office has the hand, has his hand right over it and can tell the person, you know, here is a little bit of uh, adherence or I don't like the way that vessel is, so go beside it, uh, go along there. Um, and then I'm going to show you another video here. may not be seen super well because I was filming a screen. But you can see here the live feed of the microscope with the hand of the surgeon right superimposed in it. So the surgeon at the distance can see his own camera feed with the hand of his colleague helping out and guiding uh, him with the procedure. So this is uh, very simple to do and can be super uh, efficient in terms of interaction. Here I'm showing you another example where we can see uh, these were uh, surgeons performing uh, a laparoscopic hemicolectomy and uh, with the help of another surgeon in his office. So green screen, yeah, camera, yeah. Uh, holding uh, just uh, the handle of a scalpel, sees uh, the live feed of the, um, of the uh, laparoscope machine and in a second you'll see his hand going over the feed and uh, this, these were two seniors fellows. So the surgeon is very close by, but he's uh, trying to really uh, enhance their teaching by having them being more autonomous, but being right close to them. 
So, but the, the person could be at the other end of the world and helping out with the procedure. So um, um, we also wanted to be able to do the same thing using all kinds of objects, including 3D objects. So what you're going to see here is a little video showing how you could put images, videos, 3D objects right on top of live feeds. So here I put a, a 3D model of an eye with a piece of the part of the bone over my own eye. I can change the opacity here just to show where it fits with the anatomy. So the two persons on both sides can pick up the object, rotate it around. So you just superimpose. Uh, it's really augmented reality where you put these, these on top of a real-time uh, uh, feed. Here what you see is um, a colleague holding an ultrasound probe. And here I have thrown in there a 3D digital probe. And I'm putting the probe over his probe. I'm going to change the opacity. And then the person look at his screen. He sees both his live ultrasound feed and my 3D object over his probe. And he can follow what I'm telling him to do. So here I move the probe and he just follows it so that I can guide at a distance with these virtual 3D objects. Uh, I can guide him. Here I have a 3D virtual defibrillator, and I'm showing the person that has the real defibrillator in front of him. I'm showing him, for example, how to hold it. But here, my hands are in the air, in fact. I'm using a green screen that you don't see here over a 3D object that is virtual, and the other person can see is real object. So we can have this very dynamic virtual interaction. Um, then uh, you can do all kinds of sharing uh, during the session, you can incorporate uh, videos, images. So here, you see it has nothing to do with medicine, but uh, uh, an artist is putting the plan of a house, takes the, old, the camera feed of the other person, so they really feel like they're together, putting some of the images right over the plane, takes his hands, put the hand to show where he would like to place the, the, the chair, so the other person can take the image. It's a collaborative canvas, so both people can play with things. So here, somebody is showing the live feed of where they would like to put chairs. So um, they can take these 3D models, and both of them can play with it, place them where they want. So they have this, again, very uh, interactive virtual interaction to be able to have a clear um, collaborative uh, communication, uh, allowing them to, um, to do things that you cannot just do with simple plain video conference. Um, then another very important thing for medical people is to be able, when doing either assessments or supervision, to be able to incorporate reports and checklists. So in the application, you can go in the checklist and reports section, and you can um, uh, do your own template of checklist and reports so that while you're doing a procedure, uh, for example, if you have you know, five different steps and each of them have very specific points, you can monitor the person that is at the distance and just click on each thing that are done. You can drag and drop the snapshots that you take during the procedure so that you do your live report or filling up a checklist if it's for training purposes. So it's standardized procedure, and right when you're done, you just, you're done with your reports, you're sending it as PDF, or you you transfer it through the platform, but it's a uh, we need all of this integrated, so you don't have to go through five different programs to to do it. So here, I click on checklist, I hit create template, and then it's a super easy template where you just add text line. You can add all kinds of different answer types like uh, done, not done, yes, no. Uh, like here, I put um, input field, so you can put name. Uh, hospital chart number. So after that, you're going to be using this to fill it up during the session. So um, here you see how it looks. So if I would be using this during a, a, a thrombolysis, for example, the neurologist pulls out the thrombolysis um, um, uh, in stroke remote consultation checklist for the NIHSS criteria, and he can fill up everything as he's doing the exam. And here I didn't put any points, but you can put the points that go with the specific uh, um, aspects that are looked at. And at the end, the NIHSS score just appears, and you can take snapshots of the scan that you're looking at um, through uh, secure uh, screen sharing, in incorporate in the report. And as you're done, you're just sending your PDF, your email, your uh, report by PDF to the 
the person you just um, uh, spoke to or by email and they just receive it right away um, so I'll let it work a little bit here so uh, both people can work in the report so I can type something you type something here I just take my snapshot I incorporate it in the checklist so it allows us to be able to either for supervision of a procedure or, or supervision of a real clinical encounter it gives you the tool to be able to do all of this then send it by email they receive a high resolution PDF with everything uh, included that you've done during your report then uh, and this is the last one what we've incorporated for uh, convenience was for the the person to be able to access the platform not only from the computer but also from uh, uh, simpler devices like Android iOS uh, and also for uh, from uh, simply the web browser so um, so here you'll see um, uh, again as I said the the full version to do everything I'm j I just showed you is for now on Windows uh, 7 or 8 we're developing the Mac version after Christmas so now here is the light version on an Android uh, tab uh, Android is out and iOS Mac OS and web browser will come probably soon after Christmas so here you just find your contact you establish the connection and you can still show images and videos uh, and even chroma key to the distant person but obviously you cannot connect a USB cam in your in your Android device so you cannot incorporate ultrasound feeds and things like this but you can receive multi-feed uh, images videos from the person you're communicating with so um, just to finish um, the, uh, the, the, the you will see if you go on the website uh, the company which is the, a company I started in 2012 called Innovative Imaging Technologies, so IIT. I have a team of uh, 12 people, a multidisciplinary team, all kinds of, of different specialists, and our objective is really to try to really reinvent the way we interact. How can we bring a more dynamic uh, collaboration between people and enable hyper presence? So, um, uh, really, always uh, thank my team, a, a bunch of brains uh, together. Uh, they work hard and uh, they produce phenomenal results. Uh, we have uh, these kinds of uh, wall painting that you can draw on everywhere in the office, so it's uh, it's really uh, cool to see them go. Uh, and to conclude, I would say that um, the idea behind Reacts was really to maximize it, an integrated way of doing uh, a safe communication for both simple uh, sessions, but also for teaching supervision, provide care at a distance and facilitate communication and on the education education part it really I think uh, offers us a way to bring new teaching methods uh, using multimedia elements augmented reality and checklists so uh, hopefully this will bring uh, interactive education to a, a new level uh, so for those interested the the website uh, where you can see uh, and experience uh, and download the application is iitreacts.com and uh, hopefully you were able to see the videos and everything with a good quality. So on that, I'm going to close the screen sharing and go back to the session. Very good, Yannick. That, you know, that was the most effective use of, of videos during a Hangout uh, because, uh, as you know, this is kind of a new, uh, new platform also. But uh, great. But uh, just before we start opening to questions, uh, I'd like to uh, introduce Dan Ochiang from South Africa. It was kind of garbled, the introduction, due to technical difficulties. <laughs> uh, sorry about that, uh, Dan. And also, we're joined by He Young Kim from Korea. He's an ENT physician, uh, and he's a hangout lover. So, okay. Okay, so the floor is open to anybody that has a question for Yannick. Hi. Okay, Hi, Dan. Yeah, uh, quick quick question. Yeah, I like the uh, the overlay features. You had a 3D CAD model of the eye. I'm wondering, is that well, is it 3D parametric that you can change the size, change it around? You know, have mates that can slide, and and also do you have things like that for surgical tools or, or other new kinds of parts? Yes. So in fact, what we wanted to do for the 3D objects was for anybody that wants to put their you know any 3d object in it to be able to do it so uh, many of these objects that you've seen uh, some of them we created them so one of our graphic artists you know in one of the 
uh, I'm not a, a pro at, at, at these things, but there are all kinds of software that can be used for 3D uh, design. So uh, once you're done with the object, you just have to export it in, in, a, in a language called OBG, which in fact is similar to a PNG or bitmap or JPEG. So um, we have on the website about a page and a half, just a couple of steps that uh, graphic artists have to follow to take their own 3D objects and, and have it React compatible. So you either have someone that has, uh, you know, wants to model a scalpel or a specific um, uh, medical device, uh, they can have it uh, um, uh, converted, I would say, to the React format. And once into the platform, you can turn it around, play with it, maximize it, change the opacity, or you just go on one of the um, the website um, that have. There are a bunch of websites that sell royalty-free 3D objects that are very good, and you just adapt it, you follow the same criteria as to export it to React, and then you can do what you want with it. So it's very easy to incorporate it, and then use it in any of the live uh, React session. Very good. Okay. Okay. More questions, please? Yes. Okay, Julio, go ahead. Okay. First, congratulations. Very, very interesting. Yeah, I, I can see, you know, how to use this in different ways. Like in the Congress, in different rooms, can you see the, the presentation? In primary care, you know, you can help a, 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 a ER doctor. And my question is, are you using the React in your service? What is the big problem, in your opinion? What's the big what? Can you repeat that? Can you What's repeat the that? big problem for you using this program, in your opinion? You mean the biggest problem? Is that, was that the question, Julio? Yes. But in fact, the, the biggest potential problem would have been, uh, and, and that's what we focused on a little, a lot at the beginning, was security. Because uh, here in, in the province of Quebec, uh, like most provinces in Canada, there are very strict criteria. Uh, can you still see me, guys? Yes, I can see you. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, there are very strict security criteria for uh, everything is usually ran in the, I would say, the... Um, the intranet of the healthcare system of the province. So to be able to have communication between, for example, my nurses at the hospital and me at home, uh, we had to follow very strict criteria. Once this hurdle was done and that what the way we were doing it was, you know, based uh, along, um, uh, was, was fine, was following guidelines and was uh, accepted, um, people are don't see any problem. Uh, we don't have problems with confidentiality or things like this because uh, we tell the patients, uh, you know, we're going to be uh, uh, remotely um, uh, interacting with uh, this physician or this physician, and um, the equipment uh, is simple, you know, uh, good quality laptop, so we didn't get technical problem. The potential problem was the security one, which we took care from the beginning with the system we were able to put together. Other than that, people see it more uh, as solutions uh, because um, the way we communicate now at least uh, in our healthcare system, is through visual conference, you know, with these uh, bigger, uh, more expensive system. And uh, none of the, uh, I would say, like FaceTime, Skype, none of these things are authorized for the healthcare environment. Uh, so people have a limited way of communicating with, with patients or with physicians that are not on site, and even with physicians between hospitals. So I must say that uh, it brings more solutions than uh, problems. Uh, so uh, there are not many problems other than, as usual, you know, having people uh, get organized to get this new way of communicating. But uh, it, it goes pretty well in terms of adoption. Okay, I have a quick question, Yannick. Uh, is there any is any thought going into using Google Glass as a camera? Yeah, in fact, we have the Google Glass. We've been working with them, uh, and um, we've integrated them to the platform. We haven't released it yet because. For now, the, the 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 version of Google Glass, if you're trying to push them a little bit, we uh, want to be able to bring back feedback in the glass so that you could see some of the AR stuff that you've seen. So the person could have the glass, and then we feed back a video, we feed back. But uh, there are some uh, hardware problem where when you're trying to push it a little bit, it's heating, and, uh, and the, the just having the feed through the platform, just a single feed, 
is not a big problem and this we should uh, release that probably after Christmas uh, so the person could be wearing the glass and the other person sees what's happening but you won't have this high level of interactivity just because the hardware for now cannot uh, talk can, cannot uh, in terms of performance cannot uh, tolerate it mm -hmm. uh, but the simple feed uh, yes you'll just have to wear them go to a specific uh, uh, parameter and activate them in the platform yeah it's just used as a camera essentially yeah. just a camera exactly exactly okay okay more questions from the panel could I ask a question yes Hey, um, great work that you're doing, and, and, and especially in uh, surgical disciplines with the training. Uh, my main question is, um, with regard to simulation training that's really picking up in a lot of medical student training and surgical training models, uh, a little step back would be to be able to integrate your software and your program with uh, sort of maybe models that can provide haptic feedback so that people can be able to try simulate on models rather than the actual patient. and, and for now your system is perfect and works well, but maybe an area of expansion in the near future would be try to integrate it into simulation training models and have medical students and residents also try to train and be able to be mentored the way you're doing. Yeah, that's interesting. In fact, one of the updates coming in early 2015 uh, will be uh, uh, the recording annotation playback. So we've already used it. Uh, again, Friday we had a simulation uh, for a patient uh, coming with um, uh, uh, herniation and, and the resident had to diagnose this and do a brain death uh, uh, exam. Um, but uh, so what we're doing is just placing three webcams. We had uh, something also connected so we had the monitor feed and the people are in another room through Wi-Fi and they're um, so now what we're doing is we're recording it through screen capture. But after Christmas what you'll have is the way to put annotations live record the procedure so then you can play it back uh, and do the de debriefing and you'll have your timeline at the bottom where you see all the annotations plus another timeline for a reviewer so you could be doing a simulation in your, uh, in your uh, OR or in your sim center with all the cams you do the annotation and you send it to me even if we're offline we're not you know we're asynchronous and then I'll be able to check it out put my comments send it back to you so even so, the idea is to really not push only the live interaction, but optimize the training through this asynchronous uh, kind of communication. Okay, well, mm. what, what, yeah. one, one quick question, uh, Yannick. Uh, you mentioned you were working with neurosurgeons right now. What are you doing with them? Yes, yeah, so um, we've been involved with the neurosurgeon for a while, and uh, we're we just uh, finalized the. Uh, all the terms and everything for the all the objectives for a very nice uh, research uh, or, or pilot project that we're doing with them. Uh, it's in two dimensions. One of them is educational. The other one is clinical assistance. So uh, there will be, uh, I think it's uh, three senior fellows and uh, a few residents uh, with uh, attendings. And uh, one part of the project is focused on um, assessing. Let's say they're the senior fellow. Uh, is doing uh, a surgery um, and um, the, the, the attending is very close by, he's like right in the next room. But the idea is to see that you know if, if they're on their own, if they're doing their thing, interact interacting without having the person breathing over their shoulder, do they have better autonomy, do they feel they're learning better, they're more confident. Um, so they're looking at, a, uh, I would say, a, 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 a kind of a, the educational training purpose of, of this remote assistance, uh, it doesn't take less time for the surgeon. He's not, you know, gone for a coffee. He's really uh, uh, assisting live every single thing that's happening. And if he needs to, he just comes back uh, and put his hand where he needs to 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 have his expertise. But but there's a so this educational aspect. And the other aspect is uh, during the calls. If the 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 residents are on call, they need to do a procedure that they're uh, they can do. They're trained to do it, but they need some assistance or supervision uh, and instead of just have being a phone call and uh, they will be able to have this uh, hyper presence with them so this is the other aspect which is uh, looked at and it will be done uh, we're starting like now and and it will end in March uh, and the, the neurosurgeons uh, were very enthusiastic about integrating this into their practice uh, so um, it's going to be a very uh, interesting and dynamic uh, project 
Well, you know, Yannick, maybe we can get those neurosurgeons in the in the coming weeks to uh, to tell the other neurosurgeons his experiences. Yeah, yeah. in fact, uh, before uh, you're totally right. Before bringing them on, they wanted to be able to get going and you know get some stuff done, and sure. then uh, at some point in January we can get them in and and uh, give you some of the uh, impressions and uh, uh, and uh, how it goes in the project uh, once we've done a couple of cases. Good, good. Okay, more questions. Uh, Peter, Dan, Excuse me. Or, or Bernardo? Yeah, Bernardo. Yes, uh, can you hear me? Yes, yeah. we can hear you. So I I want to congratulate you for the this, I think it's a really amazing tool, tool because now I can see the fusion of different internet uh, technologies. You know, it's a kind of fusion and it's very useful to neurosurgery. We can interact with neural navigation, and can see videos from the microscopes, from the endoscope surgeries. It's look like really amazing. And I think it, when it comes to Brazil, it's really helped to save lives that would be never saved before. Because you have a very huge country that some specialists cannot uh, uh, has at a more remote place uh, on our country. So congratulations. And I'm very appreciating this, that too. Thank you, Bernardo. And Bernardo, by the way, uh, in, in my team, uh, one of the guy is coming from Argentina, and the other one is coming from Brazil. Oh, uh, really? So uh, we have the platform in both Spanish and Portuguese. Oh, uh, very nice. And, uh, yeah, so what we, it's French, English, Portuguese, and uh, Spanish. And uh, we've uh, done a major updates recently, so we're just finishing the translation of the update part. And hopefully before Christmas, when you download it, you just have to go to language, choose Portuguese, and uh, that's even better because I think then I think it's easier for for the people that are maybe not always perfectly comfortable in English to to do their uh, uh, their procedures. So uh, just to let you know, it will be uh, I think even a plus uh, for you guys. Great. Oh, very nice, very nice. I'm very anxious to see this technology working in my countries soon. Perfect. Thank you. Good. Okay. Thank you. More questions? Peter, do you understand uh, the platform? Uh, yes, John, thanks. Thanks, Yannick. Uh, it's a, it was nice uh, pr presentation. Actually, uh, here in Russia, uh, we are not so very computerized uh, or uh, uh, country, and uh, it's uh, actually such um, uh, programs, such uh, equipment, and uh, such uh, technologies are only developed in our country. But uh, as I work in a um, leading center in uh, Russia, where we have the um, uh, modern microscopes and modern endoscopes for neurosurgery also we have, have uh, ex almost also we have neuro navigation I, I think that it uh, could be a um, uh, good um, platform for uh, to make some uh, presentations to um, make some education programs for our colleagues in uh, other um, parts uh, of our country where uh, neurosurgeons do not have such um, uh, equipment like like we do so um, I think uh, it's it's a it's a very good uh, platform and uh, actually maybe it will be I I don't it's for me uh, I think it's 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 not so very um, how to say it's very too too many too too many uh, information or how to say too many Mm, uh, it's 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 a huge, not it's very huge. I, I think it's it's it maybe it will be easier to understand and to work uh, on on programs that on light programs that could be uh, downloaded to the Android um, for phones communicators or to yep. I, I, iPhones. You see, so mm, I think it's 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 a good idea. I I I will sure I will visit your website and mm, probably I can. Take something from from your site, and maybe maybe we could uh, work in future with you. Yeah, because uh, uh, any of you guys, uh, when you go to the website, you can uh, download a free trial. And once you're in the platform, if you go to contacts, 
you just invite, like you find me, you type my name, you invite me, and I get your, an invitation from any of you, and then we can just uh, chat and connect and do a live session uh, with the platform. The only thing is for you guys that are just Mac users, the full version is for uh, Windows, and we're coding the Mac version starting after Christmas, so it will come. <laughs> well, you, you know, Yannick, uh, uh, Peter's pretty internet smart. I think you could easily lead him through it. And the impression I get, it's fairly simple because there's yes. no, hard, no hardware. Uh, all you need is a good internet connection, and that's it. And you download yeah. the program, and you're, you're ready to go. And I've done uh, communication uh, with a colleague in uh, Ireland, and uh, she had an internet connection of about 1.2 megabyte per second, and we were able to do a, a very nice uh, uh, interaction where I had a live ultrasound feed, a camera, she had her camera. Uh, so um, as long as you have um, uh, between 500 kilobyte and 1 megabyte per second, you'll be able to do something good. But if you have more uh, connection, you need uh, a higher speed connection to have uh, be able to put all kinds of things that's normal because you require it requires more bandwidth if you put more stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, you, you know, uh, Sean, Sean represents a product. Uh, Combine a videos on a tablet. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, John. Go ahead. Go ahead. A tablet or, or a phone, you just have one USB connection. Is it possible to combine videos there? I mean, you talk about the S video to USB converters. Uh, if you want to, you know, you have multiple streams together, how would you do that on a, on a tablet? Yeah, on a tablet, the only for example, it depends if it's a if it's a computer tablet. For example, you know the Surface for from uh, Microsoft has two cameras. But when you put Reacts on a Surface, you see the two cameras at the same time. Plus, you have a USB port. So if you connect, let's say, an ultrasound machine through the USB ports, you'll have three streams. Um, if you take an Android, the Android and the uh, um, uh, iOS devices. Uh, can only display one of the two cameras. So you have to use the little uh, thing to flip the camera. This is hardware-based. We cannot show the two feeds at the same time. You have to choose between the two. So um, what we're going to be working on in the future, we, we've done it already. It works, but we haven't integrated it. We'll be uh, to be able to integrate IP cameras. So then this will take wow. care... Uh, it will take care of the USB port. So for now, it has to be a USB cameras, uh, a camera or video input. It could be anything that you convert and put as a USB. Uh, but in the near future, you'll be able to integrate IP feeds as your own cameras, which will take care of the multi-feed on devices that don't have uh, a USB port. Okay. Thanks for the question. I think John, you're on mute. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I should know there how to use it. I should know how to <laughs> use the platform. But you mentioned something about uh, how to how to show other people remotely how to use medical devices. Can you comment on that a little bit? Yeah. In fact, um, if you're if you wanna, let's say you're using, let's say the microscope, uh, the neurosurgical microscope that you've seen. Um, it's very simple because behind the device, there's an S video. And I think there's also an HDMI output. So we use this and we just connect it into a very simple S-video converter that converts the signal to USB. And it's recognized right away as a video input in Reacts. So when you are in the platform, you just get the feed, put it on the stage, what we call the canvas. And as soon as you share it, the other person sees the live feed from that device. Uh, some of the ultrasound machine and the scope, um, uh, the laparoscope, have um, um, uh, high quality signal like DVI or HDMI. So then there's another type of converter that you can uh, buy that converts uh, the other video signal. So HDMI, DVI, VGA into USB. So as long as you have that little self power, U in fact, it's USB powered uh, little uh, device, you just connect any of these other devices in your computer and you can just remotely uh, beam them. And by the way, um, right now, the way we've done the platform, uh, we really wanted to put the emphasis on this interactive communication with, with all these assets and 3D objects and chroma key. So for now, the communication is one-to-one, -one, which means that if I would call uh, you, John, I, would, I could have multiple feeds. You could have multiple feeds. We play with all of those, but it's only you and me. 
Right. After Christmas, uh, the other update we're going to be releasing is multi-party. So we are not sure now how many we'll be able to put at a time so that they're optimal. Uh, but there will be two ways. Probably um, uh, you could have people just being connected and watching the communication between two people. Very low use of, of streaming. And then uh, you could have, like we're doing now, uh, people with their webcams and sound and everything, which... Uh, uh, uses a bit more of the streaming process. So, but right now it's kind of a one-to-one -one, uh, platform coming uh, out with the multi-party in a couple of uh, months, so that you're going to be able to do both one-to-one uh, -one and multi-party like we're doing now, using also all the other modalities we talked about. Very good. Okay. Sean, do you have any questions? You know, uh, yeah, I'll just chime in here. I think uh, it's a very appealing platform in many ways, Yannick, and I congratulate you for Thank you. together and all the hard work is obvious. Uh, you know, I've had the experience working with networks in the United States for remote stroke care, and there are probably about three or four different uh, uh, networks that are, that are very respectable, and when I first started going down that road around 2009, we were looking at $100,000 robots that you could steer remotely in ERs, and as I predicted, the price points come way down. Uh, you offer a very appealing price point. Um, so I, I guess I'm curious, have you received any feedback? Obviously, you have a remote stroke uh, example in your portfolio that you're showing here. Have you received feedback about how it's working? And, and are you actually building your own network as well? Yeah, in fact, uh, as, as I said at the beginning, we've just uh, commercially released the application three weeks ago. Uh, so before that, we were only working with uh, collaborators. I mean, from I have collaborators all over the world, but uh, in specific uh, uh, environments. And uh, so we haven't done, uh, I would say, for now, real encounters with the with the stroke. Uh, we've done uh, simulations with neurologists and things like this to look at the quality when they're looking at the the, the scan, uh, the use of the checklist, the multi-stream, how they. Like, um, there, we usually put two cameras so they can see the physical exam being done at a distance from two angles, mm -hmm. which can be very useful. Uh, so we know that uh, the, uh, the comments were amazing. And, uh, but now we're really uh, moving out and going to see uh, um, uh, department services, uh, in the, I mean departments uh, from different services, including neurology, to implement. Um, in Quebec, there is now a big... Uh, um, it, it hasn't been implemented widely, the, the, the remote uh, thrombolysis uh, or remote uh, stroke assessment. So as we speak, it's in development. So we're bringing to the table our solution to be able to, uh, to have it implemented. And as you mentioned, one of the key points is costs because uh, in our case, uh, they just need to have people connected with their computers that most of them already have. Uh, uh, and the other way they operate is with, you know, the video conference platforms, which are, you know, a couple of uh, tens of thousands of dollars and doesn't, they don't have the versatility of being able to just, you know, be on the move, connect your 4G, little hotspot thing and still do the connection. Uh, plus we bring the, the checklist, the report that you can all do at a time. So uh, we have a lot of traction, but as it's a very new, newly, you know, uh, I would say um, release product. Uh, we haven't had uh, I would you know, the real life feedback for the real cases uh, as they haven't been used yet. Uh, so more than likely in the next couple of weeks, I'll have some feedback for you. <laughs> I, I would be very excited to get that feedback. I, I think that you've got a disruptive product here and can put a lot of companies out of business or at least back on their heels. Uh, <laughs> How, how would you respond to, uh, I would imagine somebody would criticize saying, uh, you know, in terms of bandwidth or, you know, continuous connectivity, I mean, you, you know, obviously you get shut out sometimes from the network. Do uh, you think that you're any less likely to have that experience than any of the other kind of products? You know, one thing that we've implemented is, um, and it's, it's pretty interesting in the platform, let's say you and I are in a session. Uh, and at some point, your bandwidth is throttling down like crazy because something happens. Our server is waiting for you to reconnect for almost a minute, just so that if something happens, as soon as you get back up, the session continues instead of shutting down everything. Yeah. And if ever, you know, the uh, some uh, 
something has crashed on the uh, internet uh, provider and there's no more internet, the session stops, but it doesn't close. It will tell you, would you like to, let's say you had already uh, started your report, you have screenshots on your, on your uh, canvas and everything. You can just say, you know, keep me in. You just save everything, finish your report, and then close the platform. So we've put mechanisms in place so that if ever the, the bandwidth throttles down, it doesn't stop. It will tell you waiting for other party to rejoin session. And if ever the other party never rejoins because of performance issue or any bug, somebody disconnected a cable, then your canvas remains intact uh, and you can finish what you were doing. Other Instead of just having everything shut down and you lose what you've started in your report and everything. Uh, so that's why we really try to optimize scenarios where this could happen. And, and I think we have, I would say, a more reliable way uh, compared to other platforms of trying to keep people connected because of these mechanisms. Beautiful. And from a medical legal perspective, you have your um, encounters backed up so that if there's ever a subpoena, it can be produced for a court document or... Uh... Yes, so this is one of the very important aspects. And um, many of the platforms that people want to use sometimes, one of the reasons why they were not approved by the uh, uh, security officers in the different hospitals was that there was no, I would say, um, I don't know how to say it in English, but a logbook or, or a log of what's happening. So in the platform, on top of all the security encryption and all these things that we have implemented, there is a way that, uh, it's not a way that either I or you could go check in the platform, but it's something we have in our, in our secure database that if somebody from your hospital says, I would like to see what happened you know, between these two IP addresses, who got in touch with who, when did it happen, it, was there really a communication, how long did it last, we have that data that can be provided to uh, officials, uh, and, uh, but it's not a back end that you just log in and you can go in it. So we wanted to be able to have that for medical legal reasons if uh, this information would be required. So yes, it's part of the coding of the platform. Very strong, nice, congratulations. Thank you. One thing that Bernardo mentioned in the in the chat room, uh, Yannick, was the fact that uh, he sees a big use for this in emergencies. Uh, have you found that so far? Yes. Yeah, so I would like to show you something. In fact, uh, you know, in Montreal, for those of you that are uh, that like uh, racing uh, uh, Formula One, we have the Grand Prix du Canada every year in Montreal. Maybe some of you came. Uh, it's a very nice attraction. So this year, in June 2014, REACTS was used during Grand Prix. So the setup was the following. So in the hospital that is uh, the mobile hospital on site, we had, uh, there's like a, a, a resuscitation area. And we had uh, two cams, two webcams. And one of them was right on top of the, of the, um, uh, the, um, the bed so that if a patient is on it, we see everything from on top. Another one was like more, uh, I would say, uh, overview. We had the monitor directly connected in Reacts. So we had a couple of crashes. And thank God, uh, at the end of the day, everybody was fine. But some of them were fairly major. So the minute that the trauma person was arriving in the bay, we were connected with the emergency physicians from my hospital, where they received the patient by helicopter transport. So they can be there and see everything going on. And I had a tablet. In fact, it's a computer tablet, one of these little Panasonic thing. And I was another feed, so I was like the moving guy. I was moving with the camera, not the camera, but the tablet connected to Reacts, so the surgeons could see the two webcams, the patient monitor with the vitals, plus my, I would say, mobile feed. And I even followed in the helicopter on my cellular network with the tablet. So the surgeons, the emergency physicians could follow from the moment the person is coming in until we're, uh, you know, uh, down in the, uh, in the heliport. And then they only have about a minute to go back to the emergency room to get the patient coming in. So it's a six-minute ride between where the, the field, the race uh, track is, and the hospital. And uh, if ever in the air the guy needs to get trached or something happened, uh, they see it. So they know that, okay, when the guy comes in, so the comments were very good because imagine we all know that when you receive somebody that just got through some crash, there's always a confusion when you get there and or people come in. You have to get the sign out of what happened. 
plus you need to take care of the patient as, as the situation unravels. So if you can avoid that because you know everything that's been going on until a minute, when the patient comes in, it's like, okay, hi, everybody, how, what's up? I've seen everything you've done. Is there an open fracture? How much fluid did you give? Um, so what I'd like to show you, uh, uh, if you um, uh, give me two seconds, I'm just going to show you a very brief clip. Uh, we did uh, a nice clip of that, uh, and um, I'll show you this. Um, I'm just going to pull it here. Uh, it's this one here. Okay, so what you're going to see is, um, let me, I just want to make sure it's the right one I have here. Yeah, okay, good. So let me share that with you here. Um, I'm going to be using Open with uh, QuickTime Player. So you'll see the, you don't have the sound with it, but the visual will be uh, fairly um, clear uh, view. Okay, so let me share that now. Here, share, medical, start, screen share. So you let me know if you see this. It's starting now. You see that? Yes, yes. Yes. Okay. So you'll see it's kind of a brief summary of what happened. And, and the guy that crashed that you're going to see had a GoPro camera on his car. So and he allowed us to use the feed from it. So you'll see it's fairly spectacular. So here you can see, uh, you know, everybody working around the mobile hospital. Uh, people getting ready and everything. This is called Circuit Gilles Villeneuve. That's the racetrack in Montreal. So here showing you uh, some of the nice uh, cars and everything. And then in a second, you're going to see part of the... This is me with my little Panasonic mobile uh, feed. And then you'll see... Look at this. This is the feed from the GoPro of the camera. Ooh. Oh. The guy got the back tire right on his hat, on his, on his uh, helmet, lost consciousness, had a little bit of seizure. And here we have the whole footage, but here we just put a quick summary. So the paramedics are coming, and then um, they get him out of the car. So here you can see just the, the people getting ready to, um, to, uh, to get the patient coming in. So it's a mobile hospital, eh? so everything is uh, temporary. Uh, it's nothing that stays there. Um, so here just showing you to so the monitor here which is ready to, to be connected to the patient so here this is um, Jean-Marc Chauny who is the, the leader of the hospital and obviously you don't hear the sound but what he's saying is uh, that this year we introduced that new technology to even more to optimize even more uh, the acuity of care to be even more performant so um, here you see me I'm just setting up stuff again webcams tablets and here the patient is being is coming in so he's coming out of the ambulance being brought in put on the stretcher and I'm on the phone with the, the emergency physician in the hospital telling them okay get connected the patient is there and the webcams are, are um, placed uh, in order to be able to show so here I'm establishing the connection with the laptop here you can see the mobile um, uh, tablet that I had and this was so here are the emergency physicians here in the other hospital that you know live they can see the um, the multi feed and uh, once we're done uh, strapping up the, the patient the team is getting ready I was following them with my tablet uh, transmitting live everything going on here we can see the physicians just giving a sign out to the others telling them the age of the patient uh, what happened there we go and then we can see this um, here, the, just a little bit of the screen when we do the screen share, transmitting the ultrasound. Instead of connecting the ultrasound machine, it's easier if you just connect the, um, the uh, if you just film the screen. So here you go. Then we're um, putting the patient in the, the helicopter. And this is here what you can see. Uh, you'll see part of what um, was uh, coming from the device itself. There you go. So here the helicopter is lifting off. And you'll see a little bit of the streaming from within the helicopter taken with Reacts. So here we're just leaving for the air. There you go. What you see here is taken through a cellular connection, streamed from Reacts uh, directly to the hospital. So this is uh, showing you, um, uh, I would say, uh, some use. Um, here, did I stop my screen share or not?
Yes, yes. He did. Okay, good. Okay. So just to show you again, uh, part of that uh, emergency response, uh, you're right, it could have, I think, a lot of uh, positive benefits. Okay. Yes. Is, yes. Any, any questions? No. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yep. Yeah. So yes, I. Uh, it seems very useful in neurosurgical emergencies, like uh, a kind of all spinal traumas and head traumas. You can check the Glasgow scale. You can check the pupils. So you can have sense about how how the gravity of these patients of this trauma, and you have. It's very useful. Yes. A uh, quick comment. Uh, Yasnik, that's great application. Um, I think especially the emphasis on saving time when try to hand over between emergency teams and just being be, uh, able to see what happens before the patient comes in, I think that was definitely a, get, a great use of the software and great presentation. Thank you, Dan. Okay. Well, going from emergency to elective care, uh, what procedure Neuro, neuro, neurosurgical procedure, Dan, this is kind of addressed to you. What kind of procedures would you like to learn from the neurosurgeons, say, in other countries? Is there any type of new type of innovative neurosurgical procedure that you kind of want to learn right now, Dan? So for us, the main thing I think would be application in uh, neuro navigation, uh, use of neuro navigation in approaching tumors. Okay. and pre planning. I think it would be very important, for example, if we had preoperative scans that we could share and then feed it on the system, and then based on that, be able to simulate um, the approach that someone would take during a tumor. And just at, as uh, Mr. Yasnik demonstrated earlier, that during the surgery itself, it would also be very useful to have someone guide you to tell you, you know, that even though my approach would be this, then I'll do my craniotomy, craniotomy in this part, mm -hmm. I'll open, and I think the fact that he also demonstrated the use of the green background and being able to put your hands into the picture and be able to actually demonstrate would definitely be something that would be applicable. Mm -hmm. So in this part of the world, we are very excited about this new technology. Um, I think we have the bandwidth, and we definitely would be looking forward to partner in order to be demonstrate how this surgical or this information can be uh, greatly applied to such circumstances. Mm -hmm. Very good. Great. Okay. Any more questions? Well, uh, very good. Uh, I guess we'll wrap it up, and uh, ho hopefully this won't be the end of our relationship, Yannick. And hope hopefully you'll come on now and then. Uh, yeah, when, that's great. When, when new things come out, or even in different uh, areas where where you see your uh, platform going. Uh, so you're welcome anytime uh, to come back and continue. Um, and and we'll each all exchange email addresses. If you want to address uh, questions to other members of the panel, or totally. if you want to, get, want to get hold of everybody, and everybody, I'll send you the link uh, to this. And of course, we'll clean it up a little bit from from the beginning. <laughs> and, uh, uh, thank you all for coming, and especially uh, thank you, uh, Yannick, for taking the time to give that excellent presentation. Thanks to everybody, and thanks, John, for the invitation. Uh, very excited to be part of you of the group, guys, and I'll let you know of the uh, updates what's coming. Thank you. Thank you very much.